This Autodesk Fusion tutorial goes over the fundamental 3D modeling technique of extruding. In all 3D modeling programs, extrude is one of the most fundamental operations you can do. In Autodesk Fusion, the general workflow is to create a sketch and then extrude that profile either in a straight line or along a curve. So let's create a sketch. Select Create Sketch, then select a plane to draw on. I'm going to press C to create a circle right on the origin. I'm going to type 50 millimeters. If I press E for the keyboard shortcut, it'll automatically select this profile. Then I can drag this either way in the positive direction or the negative direction. I can also choose the distance. I can make it symmetric so I get the same amount on both sides. I can choose two sides. So on one side, I get a different distance than the other. I can also have it be one side and then the start of the extrude be offset. So I can have the offset be 30. So you can see how it is moved 30 millimeters this way and then come back negative 12, or I could have it be negative 10. So now it moves negative 10 millimeters this way and then another 12 millimeters in the negative direction. We can also use a taper angle. This is great for when you're making molds or different parts that need to have some draft. So you can see how this is tapered out in the positive direction, or I can taper out in the negative, for example, negative 19 is a much more dramatic taper on the way in. And this can be set to two sides. So if I go to direction as two sides, this has a different distance. We are already offset. Notice how we're not starting originally from the profile plane. And then I can have this taper angle be, let's go ahead and make that as a new body. In addition to making a new body, we can also do cut and intersect. So for example, if I create a sketch on this plane here, let's draw another circle. This time I'll draw it off to the side and we'll make it 10. And then the distance from the origin will make 10 as well. And if I make this horizontally constrained, now the sketch is fully constrained, I can press E. And if I shoot out this way, I get some options that I can join. And if I click join. Now this is actually part of this feature. And now let's go ahead and draw on this side. So if I create a sketch on this area here, and once again, we'll use a circle because they finish very fast. Click a sketch there, press D to dimension it. We'll make this 25. Press L to get the line tool, draw a line up. I can select this line, press X, and then press D to make it 25. To fully constrain this, we can make these be equal. And now this is fully constrained. If I press E, I have a few options. I can go ahead and select this sketch here. And if I go through, I can have it cut. And remember that I can also have that taper angle. So I can increase the taper angle as I cut through. You can see how that taper is increasing and cutting through all those pieces there, which is really nice. And I can also offset that cut. So if I offset this to say uh, negative 10, I'll leave a little bit of a lip right there. So that can be a very convenient operation to have. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Another thing we can do with extrude is we can create thin wall extrude. So I'll create a sketch right here and we'll just make a circle on this side and if I press E and I extrude it this direction instead of having the type be the full extrude for a full solid if I click thin extrude I'll get thin wall this is very similar to shelling out a form after extruding it but I can change the wall thickness so I can make it nine millimeters thick then I can choose where the wall is so for example I have side one will be on the inside Side two will be on the outside of the profile, and then center will center right on this profile. So that's a really nice way to control where that wall goes, depending on where your clearances are going to be for what you are making. Another feature you can do with cutting is if I create a sketch once again, and I'll create it in this direction, create a circle. And if I have this circle right here and I press E, and we'll go some will go symmetric and I go very far. I might not know how far I need to go. 
So I can have the distance be all, and it's just going to go as far as it needs to go with these objects. And what is really convenient about that, if I press OK, and then I edit this sketch, and I move this circle over, so now this is going to be so much further over, it's still going to cut all the way through because I said all. Sometimes you want to put an exact dimension. Other times you want it to be all. There's one other really interesting, there's another really great operation you can do with extrude. Let's create a sketch. We'll create on the down looking plane. We'll make a circle. And then it'll be right here. If I press E, let's make this symmetric. Go both directions here. It defaults to cut when you are going through an object. But instead of cut, I could choose intersect. And then intersect keeps only the form that is touching both of the extruded objects. And I press OK. I can make quite complex forms that would be quite a challenge to do with just surface modeling. And if you think about how you want to intersect the two forms, you can get really complex curves. If you think about eyeglass cases or bottles, a lot of times, Containers are made with an intersect operation. So hopefully this gets the basics of extrude and fusion going for you so you can use it in your designs and 3D modeling. It's an important skill to have because just about every 3D modeling program uses extrude as one of its fundamental operations. Happy 3D modeling.